Mysterious messages and codes are always very interesting and intriguing, and with that in mind I have come up with a way of saying thank you to everyone who has subscribed and shown support to my channel. I honestly cannot thank you all enough and wanted to do a giveaway that was a little different and fun from the usual giveaways. So basically I have 12 top 5 logos hidden inside this video. All you have to do is spot one, then send me a message saying where it is and what country you're from and I will email you an Amazon gift card of 10 to 30 pound, depending on how difficult the logo was hidden. There are also two URL links hidden in the video, which will take you to a site. When you get to the site, just email me the code featured on there and you will receive a £50 Amazon gift code. I've just set up a Twitter account and will keep everyone up to date with how many logos have been found. There are some super hard ones, so hopefully all the prizes won't go straight away and will take some time to be spotted. Thank you again so much for all your support and let's get started with the video. In November 2011, Tim Hart received an email from one of his childhood friends, Jack Froze. This doesn't seem like anything out of the ordinary, apart from the fact Jack had passed away earlier that year from a heart arrhythmia. Today, the emails Jack Froze sent after his death have led many to believe there is indeed an afterlife. Tim Hart was at his home going through some emails on his phone. He noticed one unread message from Jack. The subject was, I'm watching. His heart dropped and he turned as white as a ghost. The email read, did you hear me? I'm at your house, clean your effing attic. It was first thought that someone had hacked into Jack's email and was sending the messages, but Tim Hart told the BBC that the message was so personal and related to the fact Jack used to tease him about his messy attic, which was something only him and Jack knew about. This wasn't the only mysterious email though. Jack's cousin, Jimmy McGraw, also received a personal message and was shocked at how private the information in the email was. Jack seemed to warn McGraw about an ankle injury which he had suffered some months after Frozy's death. McGraw and Jack's mother believe that Jack was trying to connect with him from beyond the grave and like to think that emails are simply a gift from Jack. Those who dismiss the fact it was Jack think it would have been an internet site which lets users write email drafts that are sent to any pre-selected recipients after your death. But the fact most of these sites will send the emails about two to four months after your last contact with the site does not explain the five month gap between Jack's death and his emails being sent. And since Jack's death was so unexpected, it also makes you question why would he have such an email service set up? What's interesting and unique about this case is that the emails all had a personal touch. Do you think Jack was communicating from beyond or was it nothing more than a distasteful prank? The Zodiac Killer between the 1960s and 1970s, in and around the San Francisco area, a mysterious killer was roaming the streets. Believed to be responsible for 37 murders, the so-called Zodiac Killer was unusual in that he would send letters taunting people about his killings. He even included physical evidence from a crime scene proving that they were indeed written by the killer's own hand. On August 1, 1969, three letters were received by three separate newspapers. The letters took credit for a recent shooting and each letter included one third of a 408 symbol cryptogram which the killer claimed contained his identity. Alongside this code was a symbol, a circle with two lines passing through it which later became part of the killer's calling card. The killer demanded these letters be printed on each newspaper's front page. If not, he said he would cruise around all weekend killing random people during the night. After the letters were published, the police chief in charge of the Zodiac case said he was not convinced it was the real killer and requested he send another letter. A few days later, another letter was received at the San Francisco Examiner with the salutation, Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. The letter was in response to the police chief's request for more details. In the letter, the Zodiac gave details about a recent murder that had not yet been released to the public, as well as a message to the police that when they cracked his code, they would have him. Just over a week after receiving the Zodiac's first coded message, the 408 symbol cryptogram was cracked by a historian teacher and his wife. It contained a disturbing misspelt message in which the killer said he was collecting slaves for the afterlife. No name appeared in the decoded text and the killer said that he would not give away his identity because it would slow down or stop his slave collection. After the 408 message was cracked, the Zodiac sent in three more coded messages, one being the famous 340 code. On the 29th of January 1974, the last Zodiac letter was believed to be sent. It contained a sick scoreboard, ME 37, San Francisco Police Department 0. It also included a symbol at the bottom that continues to remain unexplained by researchers. 
Recently, a man from Massachusetts claimed to have cracked the famous 304 letter, saying it's a cipher where each plain text is converted from a zodiac symbol to a Latin letter and then shifted three letters down the alphabet. But this has not been 100% confirmed, meaning to this day, what the messages are hiding is a mystery. And the fact the Zodiac Killer was never caught means he may still be alive walking the streets to this day. The Swedish Rhapsody Numbers Station Numbers stations are unregistered illegal shortwave radio broadcasts that are believed to transmit coded messages using a variety of sounds and voices. Numbers stations first appeared shortly after World War II, and it's widely believed that these broadcasts transmit covert messages to spies. To the average listener, these numbers stations sound nothing more than gibberish, but to their intended audience they have much more meaning. There are a small number of radio lovers who believe these messages are a throwback to the era of Cold War espionage. One of the most bizarre and creepiest of these is the Swedish Rhapsody Numbers Station. It was first broadcast from Poland in the 1970s, but many believe it is of German origin. The broadcasts feature a bizarre sequence of the music box version of Swedish Rhapsody, followed by a child or woman's voice reading out a series of numbers in German. Take a listen and see if you can make sense of this eerie Swedish Rhapsody recording. The popular theory is that this message contains encryption keys that are completely random and change with each message making them unbreakable, and many believe they contain instructions for government cover-ups or assassination plots. The WOW Signal On a summer night in 1977, Jerry Emmon, a volunteer for SET or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, is believed to have come across a message from another life form. He was scanning radio waves from deep space at the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio, hoping to come across a signal that may have been sent from intelligent aliens, when all of a sudden his measurements spiked. This possible message from deep space was so remarkable that Mr. Emmon circled it on the computer printout, writing WOW in the margin. At first, Emmon and investigators were skeptical of its origin. They thought maybe it could have been a signal from Earth that was reflecting off a piece of space debris but after investigating this theory, it was proven to be highly unlikely. The message was heard over a period of 72 seconds. It came as a single source tracking across the sky and was around 30 times louder than the background noise from deep space. All of this led many to say that earthbound objects bouncing from space debris simply could not match the signal or message that was received. It was also very sharp and consisted of only one single frequency. Natural radio sources spread across a range of frequencies, but the WOW signal was only showing one very specific frequency at approximately 1420 MHz. Since the Big Ear Telescope can somewhat narrow down where the sound was coming from, we know it came from the Sagittarius constellation, near a star called Tau Sagittarii, which is 120 light years from Earth. To date, all attempts to locate the signal again have failed, and since no repeat message has been found, the WOW signal has led to a lot of controversy about its origin and its meaning. Could it have been an unknown astronomical event, or did aliens try getting in contact with us humans? Cicada 3301 is simply a name given to an organisation that has so far posted three complex puzzles to recruit cryptanalysts from the public. But that's about the only simple thing about it. It's easily one of the most complicated and mysterious internet puzzles the world has seen. The first mission started on January the 5th, 2012, when an image was posted on forums such as 4chan that challenged people to find a secret message hidden within the image. The following message also accompanied it. Hello, we are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in the image. Find it and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few who will make it all the way through. Good luck. It was signed 3301. The first image had a text message that actually corresponded to another letter. Once decoded, it revealed a URL where another image of a duck was posted. A steganography tool needed to be used to reveal a mysterious Reddit page that contained two additional images and a series of encrypted text posts. 
After being processed, the two images revealed some more messages, one being a code and the other a message that read, the key has always been right in front of your eyes. This isn't the quest for the Holy Grail. Stop making it more difficult than it is. Good luck, 3301. There were a sequence of numbers displayed on the Reddit pages that needed to be cracked using the code previously found in the images and the Reddit text, which then revealed some text from an old tale. This text then needed to be decoded, which revealed a phone number in Texas. Calling the phone number led to a voicemail that read, Very good. You have done well. There are three prime numbers associated with the original JPEG image. 3301 is one of them. You will have to find the other two. Multiply all three of these numbers together and add a dot com to find the next step. Good luck. Goodbye. The first Sakara image that started this challenge needed to be looked at. After multiplying the 3301 with the width and height of the original image, this needed to be used as a dot com URL, which took the person to a site which had another image of a Sakada and a countdown that told the person when to return to the site. When the countdown was over, the Sakada image was replaced with strings of digits that made up several GPS coordinates. The coordinates led to telephone poles in countries around the world, including Spain, Russia, America, France, Japan and Poland. At these poles were physical posters with images of a Sakada and a QR code. It was at this point that people realised this was more than just a game, and those behind it were some extremely talented people. The QR codes led to another two images, inside of which were more hidden texts, including parts from a poem that contained codes leading to a site on the anonymous Tor network. By the time a few people had arrived there, a message stating that Sakara 3301 were disappointed that groups of people had formed to share parts of the puzzles they had discovered without any one member completing all the steps along the way. What the last tour site contained is a mystery, but the biggest question is who set up Sakara 3301? Some say due to its incredible complexity and professionalism, it's most likely an old school style underground organisation, not related to any government or intelligent agency but the thought that it could be the CIA, a clever internet troll, or even the Illuminati is still believed. It seems we will never know, but why those who presumably did make it through the final door before it was stopped haven't publicly told of their incredible code-breaking skills remains a mystery. Maybe they were recruited and are now working with those behind Sakara 3301. So that's five very mysterious messages and codes. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you've enjoyed trying to spot the top five logos. If you have spotted them, don't forget to send me a message with its location and what country you're from so I can show just a fraction of the appreciation I have for everyone who is watching and supporting my channel. Thanks again and see you next week for another video.